It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are continuing with the human slash trill leg of the Omega bracket of the tournament. Um, last time we left off with that leg, we were uh, playing Betrayal at the House on the Hill, and I had said we, that game was going to continue with Fearsome Floors. Um, I've since changed my mind for, I think, two, two main reasons. The first one is that the scenario that ended up occurring in Betrayal at the House on the Hill. There's 50 different random scenarios that could could happen. You know, in, to enjoy the game, it's best not to know what they are ahead of time. Um, ended up being about a dragon chasing everybody. So, which kind of gave the game a different feel. You know, there was like spears and armor and a dragon breathing fire and all that. It wasn't the same kind of uh, creepy fear that you might get. And so, Fearsome Floors didn't seem like the next logical step to me, narratively. Um, so that was one reason I changed. The other one is, Fearsome Floors is more of a... Uh, as I've done this tournament, let me say this, um, I've come to get a what I feel is a better sense of what games um, might work better for a multiplayer solitaire situation um, outside of just games I happen to own. Um, and so I think... This one, this game that we're going to do, both fits narratively and sequence better, and it's more of a game about story rather than a game about um, intellectual competition, uh, which is kind of hard to do solitaire. Well, it's it's interesting to do solitaire, but it's more done for, like, to work out strategies rather than to have, um, uh, to, to highlight the different personalities involved. So, these three here, Chopper, Sweet Pea and Snugbug are going to be playing Zanziar. Chopper finds himself in control of Nafid. Um, he has two different adventurers who are, are with him right now. One he's assured of. I decided that everyone would be assured of one person. Um, the other one, the little prince, he got randomly from this deck here. This is the deck of units. So these these adventures are in there. He also has a secret identity who is one of these names on this list here. That identity will give him um, certain goals. If he meets two of those goals, he's won the game. Um, so last time we saw Chopper, he had just slain the dragon. Uh, the dragon was in company of a little girl. Um, the little girl sort of fused with the dragon's essence, I like to think of it, and she is now the Dragon Queen Lot. And she is up here in the water, coming out of the water, almost like Godzilla, perhaps. Um, she's going to be moving towards the, the our heroes here, Sweet Pea, Snugbug, and Chopper, and she is going to try to destroy them, picking up armies on the way and maybe some other things. Um, so as the Slayer of the dragon in Betrayal at the House on the Hill. Um, Chopper was gifted with two extra items. I don't know if I already said that or not. One of them he gave to the little prince, and the other one, the other two he gave to the ghost of Tovard, Torvard, who is also um, in command of most of his units. His units are under here. One of those is actually his identity. We can, we can say that with assurance because little prince has no one underneath him. And so he is going to move the Ghost of Tovard to Pelagros here, and see who's guarding Pelagros. And it's the Harried Inert's Black Riders. The Ghost of Torvard is going to try to convince Har the Harried Inert's Black Riders to join his group. So how that's going to work is he's going to roll a die. Um, that's an even chance here. He's got four. The reason why it's an even chance is because they both have a diplomacy of zero, which is what they're going to be adding to this. And the other has two, so Hard and Nuts Black Riders are going to join the Ghost of Tovard. And the rules are kind of unclear on this, this issue. Um, but I play that if you recruited the, the guards of this, the town, then the town will join you. Um, because there's really no one joining the card. So if town. So if you want if he wants the uh Pelagros he he can take it and he does. Um so now he has he has another group consisting of solely the little prince. And the little prince, the little baby here, is going to try to do a, a regular recruitment in Nafid. So he's gonna roll a D six and he gets to add four to it. One one because 
his diplomacy is one, and three because Nafit's size is three, it's easier to recruit in a larger town. Here we go. And he got a six, that's very good. Six plus four is ten, so we look at here, a random unit is drafted, that's the best he could do with the little prince, and he has a random unit that's gonna go face down underneath the prince right there. Sweet Pea finds herself in command of the largest, I think, of the dwarven cities here. She's right here in Iduria. I think that's the only, there's only two dwarven cities, if I recall. Um, she also finds herself in the company of the madman who had um, breathed down her neck for most of her time in the house on the hill. Um, she also, uh, so so that became like a, a free bonus adventure that she got at the start of the game. Or in the Scald was the one I, I thought of all the adventuring units seemed the most like uh, the Madman. Um, and then she she drew Magician Thimbrius II, the Great, Thimbrius II the Great, as her um, natural adventurer. So she also gets to start with two um, two groups. And one she is going to send, actually, to this adventure spot here. The way I'm playing is adventures are the way to get these whenever cards. And they're kind of the um, extra, extra game old kind of meta rule cards. So if she gets the right kind of adventure, it could be good. Um, oftentimes <laughs> I found you get the wrong kind of adventure in this game. So she's going to check that out right now. Well, let's do the, the peaceful stuff first. Orin the Scald is going to do some recruiting in the Dwarven town. And so he gets a six plus, because he's very um, diplomatic, he gets a six plus one d6. Uh, he's going to get a unit. The, the question is whether he gets two. It's a very good recruiter. People love to follow a madman. All right, so that's six plus three. That's nine. He's going to get an additional person. Looks like some peasants there. All right, and onward to adventure. Oh, yeah. Rebel hideout. Okay, so we take a look. They stumbled upon a cleverly hidden rebel base. So Magician Fimbrus II the Great has to do this alone. Um, and he has to, he can face any of these tests. I think he's going to face the magic test. That looks like the best. So he's going to do some magic. And instead of getting an item if he wins, he gets a whenever card. All right. So. And basically how this test works is his magic plus 1d6 versus their magic plus 1d6. And I'm going to look at it as their, their belief in magic. Um, or their disbelief. I think he's going to try to scare them all with a big illusion and if they can disbelieve it, it's not going to work and they're going to hurt him. Alright, so you got a six total. That's not very good. But luckily they might be easily fooled. Ooh, and they got a six. Oh, they got a seven. So, eat failure. Each point failed equals one hit point of damage. So he takes one hit point of damage and that's actually enough to kill him. Yow. I've never had this happen before. So her army is without leadership. Um, if she doesn't have a, a leader under there, they might all just go away. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> not, a, not an auspicious beginning for Sweet Pea. All right. Well, I couldn't find anything. So here's what I am going to do. I think since they would be capable of moving back here um, before the turn's over, I mean... They, they actually didn't do any adventuring. They just kind of went there. I think I'm going to let them... I'm going to do like a loyalty roll, I think, to see. So they have to reveal who they are. There's some peasants, and then there's this legion here. And we're going to see if they, they're they loyal enough to Sweet Pea. And I guess since the, the madman's kind of the figurehead now... No, we'll do loyalty to him, because he was the one actually leading them. All right. So there's going to be two... It's an eight. And this is totally not the rules. This is too wonky of a rule to, to actually have in this a game of this level. But, um, well, I don't need a roll. This one, the peasants definitely um, are going to leave. Let's see if the unit from the first legion of Gori. Gori's kind of like Rome in this game. Uh, they have a lot of legions. There's second legion, third legion. Um, Ooh, so again, no one's no one's going to be loyal to Magician Fimbrius to the Great. So they're going to go back into this deck here, and I think 
Let's see, probably the Legion wouldn't be able to make off with the, the potion. Well, maybe these guys would. We'll do a, a con roll to see who gets the potion. It's a potion. Oh, sorry. I guess I can show you now that I set it. It's an orcish healing potion. One of them is going to steal it. Um, they got a three. They got a two. So this unit, particular unit from Gory, will get that potion. And Snugbug finds himself right in the heart of Rome here in Tragi. Um, and he has his dog with him. His dog's right there. The dog can either be representative uh be part of a group, or it can be on the map. The dog can move on its own. And mainly what the dog's abilities are is it can um, carry items to, to different groups if it wanted to, um, or it can also search for items. And I think we will say the dog has a con of either zero, because con is what's used, that's this attribute here, um, to look for items, or it can uh, do to mimic that of whoever it's with. So I think the dog's going to be there, and that is going to let it um, give him two searches for items if he wants to do that, or he can have Sweet Viadis of Nixon Lake, that's his uh, adventure, um, do something else. And as long as the dog is in town with her, it can search with her con. Like it's like off digging through, through things as they walk through town. That's kind of how I imagine it. Alright, and Snugbug is going to search twice. If either of these is a one, um, the city is going to revolt, so that could be bad. Here we go. And there is a one. I'm going to say the dog does pick up an item, though, on their way out of town. And the Dragon Queen lot moves, as we recall from Betrayal at the House on the Hill, dragons move 1d3 spaces. And that's three, so it's going to go one, two, three to the city of Alfjord in Far. And all the Norwegians who were defending Alfjord decided to join the Dragon Queen lot in her March of Terror. After Chopper's little prince failed to recruit anyone else, um, the ghost of Torvard is leaving someone behind, we don't know who, in Pelagros to kind of hold the city, and is going to check out this mine here in the mountains. So let's see what it is. It is an iron ore mine. Now he has a choice whether to look for items in there or to just leave it. Um, he gets to put a control marker there, reason being, reason you would want to control a mine, is certain um, certain goals involve controlling mines, and several people have those. He's actually not choosing to search for an item, which could probably tip off the others, that one of his um, goals is likely to control mines, because otherwise why would you spend a turn going to a mine and not doing anything there? Sweet Pea's Madman just managed to recruit two different units in one roll. Unfortunately, none of them are for her, and none of them are adventures. That really smarted for her to lose um, a good, uh, pretty much half her army, right? Yeah, half her army, and that was after she recruited. She lost, like, all her starting forces except for one. No, I think all of her starting forces she lost in that, in, uh, to this rebel hideout. I think she's probably planning some revenge. Snugbug would like to continue with his dog to um, look for more objects in tragedy. Unfortunately, in order to do that, he would have to take control of the city first by taking on uh, these three, either via diplomacy or combat. He is, I think, going to leave town to a smaller town and hopefully look around there. So he's going to, how I do it is if they're not going, if you, you kind of declare your movement and if you're not going to get anywhere, um, you draw a movement card. Though I guess he could go to Lapic. He wants to go down to Bratisar because that's going to be, there's not going to be a lot of, um, a lot of difficulty or a lot to fight there. So he can move two spaces, one, two, and we'll see what his movement says. On land, a friendly farmer feeds the whole adventure group with elven rations. Meanwhile, up, up in, uh, the north, the dragon is destroying this boat. <laughs> Little Prince has failed again to recruit anyone in Nafid for Chopper. Um, the ghost of Torvard in his group is going to try to con, uh, kind of bully the Arak scouts here in Rog. He left the mines, went went to Rog, which is also in Hagen. So you might think that um, Chopper would have one of the Hagen 
goals. I'll let you know who who of them have hog in goals in just a second. Um, so he's got a total of five against the Uruk Scouts two. That's not a very good advantage. Um, he needs to get a six or more difference in order to get this guy to join him, and that's what he wants. And that's not looking good. That's seven. That's not possible. Seven against five. So that he's not going to get hurt or anything out of it. Sometimes if you con people, they'll beat you up. Um, but he definitely didn't get the Urak scouts. So if Chopper is indeed trying to control Hagen due to his goals, that means he's probably the Prince Eric Fatland of Hagen. Um, Prince Eric Fatland of Hagen has to control Hagen and one other, and at least other, yeah, I guess one other Valar country, which could be Cudic Largos or Gori. Um, he could also just be wanting to control Hagen to throw people off, or also if you control a, 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 all the towns in a country, you get a, a free recruitment, whether you have a hero there or not. So the madman has recruited once more on Sweet Pea's behalf. That puts him at over the limit, so she, she's going to have to start funneling units into this town. Um, when that's full, she can't be recruiting anymore. She's going to have to leave town. Um, and recruit elsewhere because you can only have five in your group and only you know up to this limit on the town so three Snugbug has just revealed two of his armies here he has nori merchants and trained peasants along with his sweet viadis of nixon lake um he just arrived at brett <sighs> Bratisar, which nice thing about Bratisar is if he gets control of it, he gets a free item as a gift from the local crafters guild. Um, Nori mercenaries here, they're a nice unit to have. They they help you cross water. Unless you have a unit that can cross water, you can, you have no hope of getting up into far. Sorry, dragon queen. Um, and it can also help you get over these rivers, which can be annoying because then you if you if you don't have something that can cross water, you have to find these tiny bridges, which can be hard. So. He's got quite a large con score there. That's uh, six, plus he can only count one of these uh, face down ones. Seven. Seven against two. So that gives him, you know, a, a little, a, kind of an even chance actually. Because he's got to get six above what they have. And that's a six. That's great. That's 13 to the Nori Mercenaries. Five, that's definitely enough. Gets these nice Nori mercenaries to join. And Brathasar and an item. Great move, Snugbug. And the Dragon Queen has made the continent. Chopper has a problem. He has done pretty well in taking control of a lot of Hagen here. Um, he still has to deal with all these folks in Rog if he wants to continue. Um, but also this dragon is heading his way. That dragon will um, demolish all of his forces if he doesn't do something about it. Now he, there's two cu couple things he could do. He could um, use his stronger forces, which is headed by the ghost of Torvard, to try to head the dragon off, right? To, to try and fight the dragon. He can kill the dragon. The dragon's not immortal. Um, dragon's rather tough though. Uh, still doesn't have a huge army. The ghost could take it on. Um, or he could just keep uh, keep on as he's doing. The, the, the main problem with having to face the dragon himself is the other two are pursuing their goals while he's dealing with the dragon. Part of that is just a geographical problem. Um, another thing you could do is run away. Well, Chopper has faced dragons before, so he went um, and had his forces meet up in Nafid. That's where he started out and uh, got got an army from the Little Prince. Little Prince, for his part, is going to recruit again. And it was successful this time, so that's really great for the Little Prince. Nice job. And I think the Ghost of Torvard might as well. Um, recruit as well, and also successful. Sweet Pea is very happy as well. Her madman just recruited Honeypot the Chieftain. Honeypot the Chieftain is very good in forests, so if she did want to move north, which is where she was heading before, um, Honeypot would be a good one to lead that party, because look at all these forests up here. Um, unfortunately, Honeypot's going to have to wait till next turn. Nugbug's looking for items with the help of his dog in Bratisar. Bratis... Bratisar. 
All right, and looks like that's one item there. Speed boot. Snugbug had to discard an item. Must not be what he was looking for. Uh, heroes have a, a cap of three items, and he still only has one group. Um, Dragon's only moving one this time, but that's going to give it some more units, possibly. And lo, the dragon was able to recruit uh, through bullying this unit from the Third Legion of Gori. Uh, Chopper doesn't want to give him, uh, give her much chance to to recruit more. So he has sent his Ghost of Torvard and these Black Riders and whoever else is with him uh, northward to Nizni. Disney Tagil. Disney Tagil. And Disney Tagil is surrounded by rich farmlands. Um, so we'll see what happens with Disney Tagil. The prince, meanwhile, is going to recruit. And is successful, I do believe. That's 4 9. Yep. All right. And in Disney Tagil, we have a couple guys here some Urak scouts. And a unit of gory. On behalf of Sweet Pea, Honeybot, the chieftain, went into Largos and took control of Nagia. Through diplomacy, she didn't have to fight to do it. She talked to these Nori mercenaries and said, Listen, I'm a chieftain, follow me. And the Nori mercenaries were like, That makes sense. And so now, she says, Nagia, and the madman is going to speak some more to the people and try to get more friends. And was very successful. Two more units for Honey Pops growing. Army. So I called her Honey Pop, but her name's Sweet Pea. The Dragon Queen Lot is no dummy. She could have just attacked the ghost of Torvard, um, but instead she decided to try to recruit. Um, she doesn't really want to run away, but she also figures, you know, she can wait in her time, and if he wants to come for her, um, let him. And if she could recruit, She'd have more forces when he does arrive. However, she was unsuccessful. So. And that's going to do it for right now. Um, my son is about to wake up, and I'd rather uh, stop at this good stopping place. Rather, uh, It's going to be Chopper's turn. He's the beginning of our turn order, so that's a good place to start uh, next time. Um, it's difficult when I do games with this secret information um, to know what, what would be good to, to share with you, the viewer. Um, each of these players has their different goals. I think, you know, in certain games I think it's more fun not to know. Like when I did Battlestar Galactica, I thought it was fun uh, to keep secret uh, whether a given player was a human or a Cylon. In this game, I don't know if I should let you know what their actual goals are. Um, you would definitely be able to keep track better of how, how close they are to attaining it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to think on that. What, what's the advantage of keeping it secret? I guess there, you get that, that sense of, of mystery, maybe. Uh, but then you don't even know what the potential goals are. So maybe what I'll try to do is keep it secret, but maybe let you know when people are accomplishing certain goals. So certain a lot of the goals have to do with um, discovering mines and controlling mines. There are a lot of mine-related goals. There are also a lot of person-specific goals. Um, there hasn't really been anything that happened so far that would lead you to believe that anyone was going for one of those. So those are like, um, so-and-so has to be revealed or so-and-so has to be dead. Um, since no one's been revealed yet, that's kind of difficult to to know whether anyone's going for that. There's also goals that have to do with taking control of countries. Um, I talked a little bit about that already. Uh, and I think that's most of it. It's mines and countries... Um, oh, so, you know, adventures. Oh, having particular items. Um, I know I think a couple of people need pieces of the staff of Wormandalus. And oh, the one way that anyone can win is if they have, I think, all the pieces or, you know, a lot of pieces. But a lot of people have, um, and there, there are goals involving items. I think the orc person wants to destroy items. Other people want to have like so many points worth of items. And then some people just want to have two pieces of the staff. You could probably guess that Snugbug is going for some item thing. He's been All he's been doing has been sitting in town and searching for items. So maybe he just wants to be as mighty as possible before he ventures out into the world. He is Snugbug after all. Well, maybe we'll find out next time on the Real People of Games Solitaire Mega Tournament. Zanziar!